we would, if you all want to pray with me, so we can yes. get rid of some of the news that I got. All right, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for us. This night, for all the people, for the smiling faces, for the, the wonderful people of the Lord who love Jesus and those who have come here and don't know Christ, we ask you, God, to, to minister to them. Give them um, some clarity about who you are and what, you're, what you can do with them, how you can use them for your good purpose and your glory, Lord God. I pray for these people um, um, at this time of year, which seems almost sinister in the the air there's 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 the principalities that that we may not be aware of lord god and we cancel the assignment of the enemy over anybody in the sanctuary I cancel the assignment of, of the enemy over my family for preaching this message and being bold enough to do this we ask you lord god to just touch everybody's hearts give them joy and peace and allow them to take in what you've got, not what I've got. Less of me and more of you, Jesus, because you died on the cross and you shed your innocent blood to save our souls. Yes. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All Amen. right. So I um, have been looking into information about Halloween for a long time. You may even call it studying. Um, but uh, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of contrasting information as well as information that we can get on board with. And there's a lot of, there's people here at our church who have contrasting ideas and opinions about Halloween and what's all involved. Um, I'm not solely going to be addressing the paganism of Halloween, although there are a lot of pagan elements that come with this quote unquote holiday. So um, uh, there's, a lot of arguments about how it's heavily pagan and amongst Christians how it's pagan and it's not pagan. How we can look at the, the passing out of candy and wearing costumes and the trunk or tree as very innocent and a way to out, like reach out to communities. Um, but there's also the other side where it says it, that you ought not participate in the dark activities because they're so heavily weighted but by by darkness but what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give you the information that I've learned over the years and um, you can take the meat and spit out the bones um, some of you might think it's all bones some of you might think it's all meat but we are here um, under one spirit as Jesus Christ and um, I, hope, I hope you're okay with what I have to say um, <clears throat> so if you didn't know that most of some of our daily lives and ins and outs have pagan roots and for instance um we used to as kids when we drive over um, a set of railroad tracks we cross our fingers and put our hands in the air for good luck or you drive by a, a cemetery and you see your catholic friend do the sign of the cross um, another one is knocking on wood. If you don't know that knocking on wood is also pagan. <laughs> so when you knock on wood, what you're doing is knocking to wake up the spirit that is inhabiting the tree that was in that wood. So what they would do is they go to the forest and they knock on the tree to wake up the spirit and lay down their petition for the spirit. Wow. So when you see somebody who knocks on wood, they're participating in something that is pagan. Um, <laughs> I bet you all didn't know that. It's a good revelation. Um, people believe that celebrating birthdays is pagan. People believe that lighting candles is pagan. Um, people believe that wearing shoes in church is pagan. It's weird because you're not supposed to, you're supposed to come to the altar pure. Right? <clears throat> so, People want to lump in Christmas as a pagan holiday, Easter as a pagan holiday, and be prepared, Thanksgiving. Some people don't want you to touch Christmas, they don't want you to touch Easter, but don't touch Thanksgiving. It's, it's a, a time where we eat, where we pray, and we gather, but there are some pagan aspects of Thanksgiving. We're gonna talk about the most obvious pagan holiday, and that's Halloween. So when you walk in a store at mid-September, what do you see, let's say, in Walmart? Costumes. 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 Costumes.
costumes, candy, pumpkins, skeletons, and now it's inflatables of teddy bears with twirling heads. You see skeletons in people's front yard. If you drive down this road right here, there's a cemetery with a dead body wrapped in a black trash bag. Mm -hmm, all lit up. You'll also see now the whole is a craze of Nephilim bones. Yes. And 30 foot skeleton, 20 foot skeleton, 10 foot skeleton, right in front of your backyard. You got skeletons of pets. Now, you go to your local tractor supply, you're going to see a skeleton of a dog and a cat. How morbid. Um, let me give you a little story. So, you know, my little girl, when she came to us, the first thing she told me was that I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. <coughs> and if any of you know me in the past few years, half a decade, I have come against Halloween publicly. And the, the last thing I expected was a child to come into our home who declared that she loved Halloween. <laughs> oh my goodness, she saw the orange and black come into Walmart and she saw the costumes and she had her plans. And I was like, oh Lord, how am I gonna break it to her? But then we, I said, I'm sorry baby, but we're not doing the trick or treat. And she said, oh, why not? I had to explain to her just a little bit, you know, can't shock her. And then she was persistent, persistent about Halloween. We walked into Tractor Supply. That's when I first saw the dog skeleton. And she said, isn't that so cute? And I was like, what? What is so cute about that? What is cute? And she said, it's a dog. No, it's a skeleton of a dog. And then um, she said, Miss Yvette, can we, can we get it? Can we please get it? And I said, no, we're not getting it. I'm putting the dog down. And she said, why not? She said, can you, can you look at that? Just look at that. You've been in church with us for a little while. Can you look at that and tell me that Jesus would have that in his house? That Jesus would put a costume on. That Jesus would put Happy Halloween with skulls and bats and black and white. You, you can tell me that Jesus would do that? So ponder that as we start talking some more about Halloween right now. And she said, no. A little girl who's been unchurched, who just stepped into her home, she could agree that Jesus Christ would not have that in his house. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> so lots of things that are surrounding us are pagan. So the origins of Halloween are believed to have started by the ancient Celtic priests called the Druids in celebration of Samhain. It's spelled Samhain. S A M H A I N, Samhain, but it's Samhain. And the basic meaning of Samhain actually is summer's end, meaning we're going to step into fall. <coughs> and that, that, that started at around um, 700 BC, which is about 2,500 years ago or more. And um, the origins of Samhain can be traced to the peoples of Scotland, Ireland, France, Welsh, and even the Spanish. So interesting facts that, that the Celts actually come from a line of Noah's, one of Noah's sons, Japheth, and then they're his grandson, Gomer from Genesis 10. <clears throat> So if you're ever thinking about going back in history, you're gonna find that little fact one. And it's really interesting how a whole bunch of people that are really popular, when you think about different nations, you can, you're gonna quote off Spain, France, Ireland, people say South America, Mexico, all of these people participate in some form of Halloween or the Day of the Dead. <clears throat> so, we get the word Halloween from All Hallows Eve or All Hallows Evening, where people would celebrate um, the holy saints that have passed away. So um, actually, this All Hallows Eve used to be placed in April, around the time where we celebrate Easter. And then, because it wasn't really that marketable, they didn't use that word in ancient times. 
they've moved it to October, this, the eighth month of the year. Um, that was done actually to um, celebrate all the saints that they had in this pantheon of saints. And I call it pantheon because when they first started to celebrate saints or worship saints, and I'm going to use the word worship, because they were on a pedestal with their statues and their faces, and it was in like a rotund area, and they had a reserve space for the unseen God, of course, and then the saints. It was a pantheon. So what the church did was incorporated um, the saints of God into a very pagan practice, which is not completely unheard of because you can find something like that in Second Kings. Um, so the whole point of worshiping these saints or having an All Hallows Eve is to communicate with the dead or your dead relatives, your dead saints, the people that you want to talk to, where the veil is thinnest or lifted so you can speak with them at least one night out of the year. As if a pantheon with a statue wasn't enough. You had to try to bring them back from the dead and speak with them. Um, but we don't, as Christians, we don't believe in a lifted veil or a thin veil. We believe in the torn veil of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Matthew 25, 51. Behold, the veil of the temple was rent, in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. This curtain separated the second room, called the Holy of Holies, from the first room, so the holy place. The veil is torn so we can access Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Not just one night commune with Jesus. He wanted us to have access to him at all, uh, all times. So the veil was torn. Um, so let's talk about old customs of Halloween. Let me take a little bit of water. When you think about Halloween, um, what's one of the first elements that you think of? Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Hmm. An old custom of trick or treating actually was called solely. So people would go from door to door asking for food. This was mostly poor people, widows, orphans. They were asking for food in exchange for prayer for your dead relatives or saints. And it became a trend when people would make these soul cakes and they would give them to the poor, to the widows, to the orphans in exchange for prayers because the more prayers the better, because that's when they can get their relatives out of purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another element of Halloween is jack-o'-lanterns. So jack-o'-lanterns tradition comes from an old uh, legend with Stingy Jack. Stingy Jack was a mischievous little boy who was so, so bad that hell didn't want him and heaven didn't want him. And one day, he chased the devil up the tree and put a cross at the bottom of it. And the devil couldn't come down because the cross was at the bottom of that tree. And he said, in exchange for you, your freedom, I want you to promise that one, you don't send me to hell, and two, that I have freedom to roam this earth. So he did, he took the cross off, but then Stingy Jack reneged. He put the cross back on the tree. Well, the devil got so upset he threw a coal at him, and Stingy Jack was carrying a gourd, and the coal landed in the gourd. So now Stingy Jack roams the earth with the coal in his gourd, trying to find his way through the earth. <clears throat> Another element of Halloween is costumes. So these costumes were meant to dress up and scare the demons that were ro roaming the earth during this time where the veil was torn, or the veil was thinnest. So you put on this costume and you disguise yourself as a demon to scare the demons. What a contradiction, huh? Um, there's also the saints element, and then there's also the communication with the dead. And it's always about the dead, constant communication with the dead. Now these are all the, the, the rooted stories 
of Halloween and traditions. You'll find the communication with the dead or the All Hallows Eve dead days in different cultures, um, like in Middle the Middle East, uh, Muslim cultures, they have a All Hallows Eve day or a version of it where they communicate with the dead. China has Hungry Ghost Day, and that's celebrated on the 15th day of the seventh month. Japan has the same type of day. North and South Korea, and any any country that's actually influenced by Catholicism, basically celebrates the Day of the Dead. One of the most popular Day of the Dead countries is Mexico. Um, no, we did not celebrate. I live. I used to live on the border, a border town in Texas. We did not do Day of the Dead. It's become very popular recently, but they did do it in Mexico. Um, modern day Halloween. So the different modern day Halloween aspects are costumes where kids get to dress up as anything they want to. Candy, um, mischief, drinking, um, and all of these are, are child driven to, uh, to attract children to celebrate Halloween. Um, what we didn't know as Christians was that that while you're purchasing candy, or we are purchasing candy and purchasing costumes and buying all the decorations to prepare for this day, so are witches and warlocks and Satanists mm-hmm. and mediums. They're preparing. Yeah. So as soon as they see the decorations go up in Walmart, they're actively praying or blessing these elements at the grocery stores. Mm. If you go to YouTube and find X Witch Comes to Christ, X Warlock Comes to Christ, the most popular is John Ramirez. He says that they are actively out there praying over these elements to curse them, to get to your children and your family. It's hung so dim and bloom, but we have the victory. We have the victory in Jesus Christ, so don't be so down. We can cancel the assignment of the enemy. Another aspect of modern day Halloween is drinking. Drinking and of course adults have their costumes. Another aspect of Halloween or another element of Halloween is Ouija boards. So I don't want anybody to raise their hand, but if you have ever participated in a seance with a Ouija board, I'm sure it was a scary experience because as much as it sounds like good fun and the sleepover uh, activity to do with your friends. It really is a serious thing, so serious that even the Nazis cherished their Ouija boards. They would take their Ouija boards and dip them in platinum. Platinum, because they were that valuable. <clears throat> Halloween actually is a billion dollar industry about $108 per American citizen is spent on Halloween. That's a total of $12.2 billion projected for 2023. Last year was $10.3 billion. Let's let let that sit for a little bit. We could cure cancer, but instead people are pouring their money into Halloween. Um, Crime spikes during Halloween. This is not very fun for emergency personnel. You probably understand that. Um, DUIs and DWIs are very prevalent. Theft, fighting, and assaults. Abductions, vandalisms is very popular. Trespassing and robbery. Why all the crime? Because this, this holiday is so steeped in darkness. Because the, the people who are controlling, who, who, who are not controlling, who are participating in the darkness are more vigilant about it. Because it's their time to shine. Um, about 12% of children under the age of five are left to trick or treat unattended unattended, under the age of five. That's about 12% more than it should be. 
so grim, huh? It's horrible. But God. So another point of view for, comes from people who have converted to Christ, who have, who have participated in Satanism and witchcraft and psychic mediums, New Agers. New Agers speak against all the way. And um, we have former Satanists like John Domitis. If you haven't heard his testimony, it is so powerful. He was so heavily steeped in Satanism that he chose Halloween as his wedding date. It, that's how important it was to him and his wife. They got married on that day. <clears throat> you have um, evangelist and demon slayer, Jenny Weaver. Um, she is very active. If you haven't seen her, look her up. New up and coming. Jenny, Jenny Lopez, she's a former witch. She speaks vehemently against it. Not against the people, against the holiday. <clears throat> but how many of you know that salvation is for all? For everybody who, who, needs, who needs the Lord who has been steeped in this holiday, whether they know it or not. You could be participating in paganism, you not even know it. By the examples that I told you early before I started speaking, when I first started speaking. So the Bible says Romans in Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is power over God of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. And Titus 3 5. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. It's not by us. These, the, the people who participate heavily in this, in Halloween, who really believe in the darkness, who do this all year long, who start preparing at the very beginning, because this season doesn't start on October 31st, it actually starts in September. From the examples at the beginning, other countries are starting this holiday at the very beginning of the fall season. We've got to pray for those people to come to Christ because if John Domitus can come to Christ, so can other people who are steeped in occultism and paganism. It, it's only by, by prayer and by outreach. Um, some Christians choose to outreach on this day and pass out tracts and witness and not participate. Some people participate in things like trick or treat and they believe that that's a way of outreach. My opinion is, this is my opinion, that we should not bait people to come to Christ. Amen. Which is essentially the way that it's happening with the trunk or tree. And some people love their trunk or tree. You know, we love to have fun, you love to, to fellowship. It's the costumes and the candy, and then not being vigilant. Um, so what they see, the people who participated in Satanism and paganism, what do they see? Some say, uh, they talk about the prayer. They're vigilant. They go and they, they place verses on things that are obvious in stores. Um, and if you don't believe that candy is cursed, how many stories of razors and pins and drugs are put in a child's candy? There's no other holiday out there that you have to take a child's candy and, it's, and inspect it before they eat it. Only in Halloween. You don't take Easter candy and inspect it out of the egg. No other holiday. Should we fear? No. For 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Like I said, costumes are prayed over. When One witch says that when you put on a costume, you're assuming the identity of a demon. Okay. Most kids don't wear demon costumes. Although, there's a rise of tiny ass murder costumes going out there. The kids dress up as Jason and Freddy Krueger and all those fun guys that keep you awake at night. Um, you're dressing your child up as a princess. You're dressing your child up as a prince. Maybe what's the little, little one with the sword? It's a video game. Um, a Lego, a Lego. So um, <clears throat> that's not too bad. But how much are you assimilating your child into a cult?
culture of darkness when you ask them to put on a costume. Because where does it end? They get older, they want a different costume. They get in their teens, little girls want a sexy costume. They get older in the college arena. If anybody's been to college, you've been to a college Halloween party, you know what kind of costumes they wear. Where does it end? What we're doing is we're assimilating ourselves into a culture and it starts at a young age when the bible says that be not conformed to this world so yes trunk or treat may not be bad but it's a small piece of an assimilation of a hidden agenda we're fighting we're not fighting against flesh and blood folks we are most certainly fighting against principalities but when you allow the enemy a foothold in your life, the devil doesn't just take an inch. He doesn't just take an inch. Ask the various people around in this church who have a testimony, who the, the Satan has inched himself into their lives. For example, if you have a mouse infestation, it doesn't start with a big gaping hole in your house. A mouse can make his way into your house. Let's say her. Make her way into your house in a dime-sized hole. And let's say that little mommy mouse is ready to have her little babies. She gets in your house through that dime-sized hole. She has her babies in your house. And then what do you have? An infestation. Now let's think about the principalities. All they need is a little hole That's right. to get in your house. And then suddenly you have an infestation. Why do I have this sudden urge to drink? Why do I have this sudden urge to not show up to church? Why do I have this sudden urge to speak against Michelle or Jessica or Miss Bridget? Why have that sudden urge? Because you allow the enemy a foothold in your life. So a garment, a costume is not inherently bad. But the reason behind it is darkness. Your child can put on a costume anytime they want to. My little girl wore an Alice in Wonderland costume the day after her birthday to church. She didn't know any different. But is she going to wear a costume on Halloween? No. Because she understands why. Because we've, we've created this space where she trusts in Jesus. Where she seeks counsel and people now. She's grown into this little girl who understands where safety is. And it's with the people of God. And these people of God, like Matt and Robert and Mr. Bill, are nonconformists. Ask them if they want to trunk or treat. Mr. Bill wants to come to prayer. He wants to pray. It's all over him, all the time. He wants to pray. He's got a, he's an intercessor. He's a praying man. And my little girl sees that. She doesn't need a Halloween costume or an image of darkness. She needs a, a man who prays. Praise God. Because the first, the second month in my house, my foot was hurting. And she said, Missy Fat, you know what you got to do. <laughs> and I said, What? I she was going to tell me, but. Um, a bandage on it, or I don't know, tough back and I don't know what that is. But she said, You have to pray. Second month, I'm church. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God, God's will is. His good and pleasing, perfect will. Don't conform. Don't conform. Don't conform. Not for your sake. It's not for your sake. For your children's sake. 
for your grandchildren's sake. Don't conform. <coughs> it's not worth the risk. <clears throat> so, with costumes that are getting worse and worse, that was my bunny trail, um, we've got changing identities. People in modern society want to take different identities. And who know, we don't know if it goes back to Halloween and wearing costumes or just being a little brat at home getting their way. But there's a man out there walking around in a dog costume because he wishes he was a dog. There's people walking around in bear costumes because they want to be a bear. People are so anxious to change their identity when they need to find their identity in Christ. Amen. Don't be a sleepy parent. We can't conform or submit to the ways of the world. We must be set apart. You need to ch tell your children how to be set apart. Amen. They don't need to be like the kids um, on TV in, in Disneyland on TV. They don't need to be like the kids on TikTok. <clears throat> they need to be like the kids at school. That's right. They need to be like Jesus. What they're going to do is see you act like Jesus. And then they're going to start to act like Jesus. Amen. Because the example that we give, and we've only been parents four months. <laughs> the example we give to our little girl is Jesus. Amen. And she's learning to not conform. Praise God. From fear to nonconformist. So what do we do with churches that participate right. in trunk or treat or trick or treat or, you know, their youth pastors come dress up as the homicidal joker from Batman or the youth or some of the children from the church show up dressed in uh, as skeletons or as murderers. These are only examples I'm giving you from my church. From the old church, not this church. <laughs> um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Just remember that these, these churches that participate in these things, who say it's okay, whether it's the Catholic church or the Methodist church or the Lutheran church or the church down the road, they we are not wrestling against them. That's right. That's, right. That's good. There are people who need a savior. There are people who think they found a savior. And they may have. But they're not walking in righteousness. They're still seeing the path of darkness. When he said that he was going to be the lamp unto our feet okay. and the light unto our path. That image like always rings true in my mind because my, that image makes me think that only the path that Jesus lit is, is the only the path that Jesus is lighting is lit, and everything around is darkness. So when we come to a holiday like this, we come to think of sorry, not Thanksgiving. I'm not going to touch Thanksgiving. We're talking about Halloween. Um, like Halloween, we got to remember that even in among, amongst the darkness, like it's light when we have Jesus. So I've given you examples of home. In our home, we simply don't take part in darkness, in death, which um, we use scripture to help save that off. We also believe that this is a counterfeit holiday. And um, this is just my opinion. I don't have scholars backing me up. But it's this counterfeit holiday comes against um, the fall feast days. So, on to this. In the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first feast day, that happens in September. Do you remember when I told you that other nations celebrate the Day of the Dead? They start celebrating their Days of the Dead the same time that the Lord has ordered his people, the Jews, to start the fall feast days. Remember when I said they start early? They're starting early, conjuring up spirits to roam this earth, lifting that veil. So it's not 
It's not just one day. It's a months long process that they're doing this. <clears throat> so the Feast of Trumpets, we're called to re repent. When the shofar home horn blows, we recognize that we need to stay away from sin, turn away from it as fast as possible. As opposed to Halloween, when you're encouraged to mischief, DUIs, drunken parties, skimpy outfits, Ouija boards, um, <clears throat> you're encouraged to participate in bad behavior. When at that, when at the Feast of Trumpets, you are encouraged to repent. The next fall feast day is a Feast of Atonement, where, where we're called to a day of solemn rest and ponder and think about the things that the Lord has done for us so we are allowed, we're able to repent and come to him. Remember the veil was torn? That's something you should be sitting and pondering on the Day of Atonement. Whereas in Halloween, you're restless. You're going from door to door, trick or treat, ringing doorbells. Then after you put your kids to bed, you go into the next party, and then the next party, and then the next party, and the next party. And who knows what they're doing there? It's restlessness. When you're called to rest and be humble. And then the next fall feast day is a Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles actually is a fun one. You make a tent, it's a tent with the, uh, you don't have a roof, so you're relying on the Lord to protect you. And there's three walls and only one door. And in that, during that time, you should have a banquet set in your tabernacle where you invite the foreigner, the Gentile, people who are downtrodden, who are poor. You invite them into your tabernacle to feast where you share the good news of the coming Messiah. That's the tabernacle. At Halloween, you go from door to door playing tricks break into houses, participate in darkness, which is the opposite of simply inviting somebody in to peace with you. John 10, 7, Jesus said, again, said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. In your tabernacle, there's only one door. And Jesus is the door. <clears throat> so I'm not here to condemn you if you've ever participated in Halloween if you participated in darkness I mean in, Hall in trick, or, trick or treat if you ever put in a costume if you ever put in fa uh, face paint if you've ever gone to a drunken party on this time of year because it's not just one drunken party it's more drunken parties you got so many it's like almost like Thanksgiving you gotta go visit people's houses just to go have a fun, happy fun time, but in darkness. When Jesus is the light, give no opportunity to the devil. Yes. You were given authority to tread on, on uh, serpents and scorpions, not dwell among them and use them as decorations for your home. You're not supposed to be equally yoked with unbelievers or, or partners with for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? The, the most crime that happens in this nation is on Halloween. Wow. Second Corinthians 6 says, <clears throat> widen your hearts. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, don't be unequal. Oh, I just repeated that. I repeated the same thing over and over again. Sorry. So, like I said, I'm not here to come against anybody who has participated in Halloween. Lord knows I have. Painted a whole skull on my face. And then had people stand in line and paint their faces like skulls. I made my own costumes. I did my own thing. I went to the parties. I may have participated in all the bad stuff, but I was there. I made way for the enemy 
in my life. And it took a long time to get it out. You don't, you don't want darkness to cement him itself in you. Not even, not while you're young, not while you're old, but definitely not while you're young. Because it's hard to, to untrain the young mind out of that mentality of darkness. Where it's okay to sit in the dark and watch scary movies. Where it's okay to wear the scariest costume. How am I gonna outdo myself next year? Where it's okay to take that one drink and then the next drink and then the next drink until you don't remember how many drinks that you had and you don't remember how you got to where you got in the morning. That's not okay. Not as a Christian. Amen. That's not okay for the unbeliever either. But that's why we have to be sober by this. That's why we have to stay away from the image of darkness. So, um, let's pray. Yes. I didn't want to be harsh. That was too harsh. No, you can. Can you Praise God. So, Heavenly Father, we just ask you, we ask you, Lord God, to, to open our hearts to those who have darkness in them. We ask you, Lord God, you give us the words to show them the light. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our light, for redeeming us from the darkness and the pit. And some of us have had journeys where our path was not lit, where we moseyed on over to the darkness until you lit path, where we stumbled over the stumbling blocks in our way. We ask the Lord God to give us wisdom to show others. To show others of who you are and your goodness. That they shouldn't be satisfied with the ways of this world in carnality. So their, their flesh is, 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 is overcome by your word. So we ask you, Lord Jesus, to give us a hunger for more of you. We ask you, Lord God, to to give us the strength and the courage to invite people into our tabernacle. The strength and the courage to be like a shofar and call people to repentance. Yes. The strength and courage to sit in humility and humbleness and reflect on your goodness and how you rescued us. Yes. <clears throat> how you've torn the veil and given us access to all authority. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I exercise my authority given to me by Jesus Christ that anybody who has a stronghold right yes. now is broken and bound that yes. they're released from their chains yes. no matter how small so that anyone in here who has a desire to be released from the chains of their iniquity Lord God release them I cancel the assignment of the enemy yes. over our children the ones who have been assimilated yes who see video games and only see that as life. Who watch the Disney Channel and think that's the way we're supposed to be. That's what a family really is. <laughs> no. The family is that what we have been pulled to. Yes. We've, been united, we've been united by your spirit. We've brought, been brought in by your blood. This yes. is the ultimate family. With the light so shine so strong, Lord God, that no holiday, counterfeit, or otherwise, can overcome it. Thank you, Jesus, for making us a city on a hill. People will be attracted to those of us who, who want to spread your gospel. And they'll be overcome by the Holy Spirit to teach it. To show them your glory and who you are. To stand there and show themselves mighty and not identify with the agenda of the enemy. We thank you, Jesus for who you are and for being so precious in our lives. Yes. So valuable. Yes. That we hold on to it and never let it go. Yes. For our family members who need that inspiration to never let it go. Touch them, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. And I pray, God, that it glorifies you. Yes. Amen. Amen.